Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft 365 Tech Titans and today we are going to see how you can create a new column in SharePoint. So first of all what you see on my screen is one of the team as you can see the team's logo here. So it's one of the team which is open in SharePoint. So um, it's just the back end of the teams how you can see all your documents. And on the screen here I have I have a SharePoint location where it says um, website development and under website development under documents I have a location with all these columns so the first column these are the by default columns which you will get from SharePoint so it's the name modified day modified um, when the when the document was last modified and who modified the document so these are the by default columns you will be getting and let's say if you want to create um, let's say based on our requirement right now what I'm going to make a change here is that um, we need a, a document created date so based on that like based on the requirements you can always um, create new columns you can always edit the existing columns but right now we want to create um, let's we'll try and create two different columns so first of all I'm going to show you how we can create a column so right beside your existing columns you will see a button which says add column so when you click on the add column button you'll see um, you'll get a bunch of different options where your um, new column can be a text if you have uh, preset values that you want to add in the column you can select a choice or you can have a date and time so what we are we are simply going to go ahead with date and time because I want I want to add the date when the document was created and I want to keep a record of the created date on the document so let's go ahead and click on date and time and click on next so now it's gonna ask us first of all um, the name of the column so we can name it created date and you can create a, on the description you can type anything I'm, I'm just gonna quickly leave document created date and the type we have already chosen date and time this is where um, if you missed something and you selected a wrong one you can always go here and you can select the different from here single line text so this is the second time you can always edit and you can you can choose to include time and you can I, I just need the date so I don't need the time right now and then uh, you can have a different kind of format here a friendly format or things like that so right now we're not going to choose that under more options you can cre create that require this column contains information so this is how you can make it a, a, a mandatory field just by clicking that this should always contain and you can also select if if you have a requirement where none of the values should match with each other so in that case you can always select enforce unique values and then this one's going to be by default add to all content times so this is kind of in the background that this column will be added to all different locations in the same in the same library or site so click on save and there we go you can you can see the created date here so now let's say i want to add uh, add the value for these two documents so I can simply click on two or let's say three of these click on the three ellipses and properties under properties this is the only column we have created the others are default so you cannot change the default uh, default columns but yeah under created date you can simply click on this calendar and it's gonna show you when was the document created so I'm gonna put June 1st 2023 and it's going to save the data like this so just let's assume that these three these are the logos I have so let's say that in within my library um, all of the different pictures like any different pictures or logos they all have a retention of just one year so after one year from the created date let's say 6 1 2023 so next year on 6 1 2024 these documents will by default disappear from my library because I have that kind of retention turned on that only keep the files for one year and these kind of dates always help you in uh, merging like cleaning up your libraries and uh, 
straightening up their records. So for example, we're going to see another column. So I'm going to go ahead and click add column. And this time let's set, let's select choice and under choice go next you can always select document type document type and under description you can simply say type of the document there we go and under choice so now these are the preset values so under choice what i can say is it's a it's an invoice or if the file is a logo or if the file is for example just a document just a documentation or or probably let's do this um, briefing note for example so I, I'm just guessing these values so you can have anything you want if you want to add choice you can add a choice and you can you can keep adding the choices um like whatever the number of values you guys have now someone will say i don't need the color so what you can simply do is you can click on this value here and on the right hand side you'll see a color tray so click on that color tray and you can always change those colors you can change the colors to different colors or you can hit no styles so this will remove all the colors so for now i'm just going to leave it as it is and choice for for just um i can throw in purchase order and there we have all four choices and then under more options on the choices side if you click on more options you're gonna get the same values like allow multiple selections so this will be a different addition like how you want to see if you want to put this as radio buttons all these values this would be shown as radio buttons and you can select one or multiple selection based on how you set the value so i'm going to leave everything as default and if i if you have a requirement to let the users select more than one value you can always turn this on and then enforce unique values is the same as before so i'm going to go ahead and click on save there we go so we have the document type we don't have anything by default so i'm just going to select all three logos from here and to go to properties same way three ellipses and properties so now we've got our document type here and when you click on the document type these are the by default choices so there is no there is no chance of a human error while typing anything and if in your case you have a basic requirement that you will all the values in the choice or all the values under the metadata is going to stay the same it's a best it's a good practice to always add those values by default just to avoid some mistakes in typing so for this i'm going to select logo and click on save so now we have the document type as logo and you can you can always think of that um scenario once right now i don't have made very many um, items here and the reason we always try to create multiple columns or we always try to um, put in metadata is really helpful when you have um, over 100 or over a thousand files within one library so right now i don't have much but i can always show you that how you can uh, play around with this let's say you have like 500 files in this library and you are actually looking for a logo so instead of keeping keeping to scroll all the way to the bottom and then missing the values you are looking for you can always write beside the column so for example you are in this library and you have a lot of documents and you want to focus on logos so in that case what you can do is right beside the column document type there is a down arrow so click on the down arrow and it's going to it's going to show a doc, show an option saying group by document type so click on group by document type and just collapse right from this arrow just collapse all these and now you can see document type unassigned so the ones which which doesn't which doesn't have any document type they are all gonna go under unassigned but you are looking for logo so there we go we have the document type as logo and now you can quickly find what you are looking for you are looking for a logo but there might be 20 logos but at least you got that sorting out out of 500 you have your 20 logos grouped 
by the document type so this is a quick way and once you want to go back and you can always click on this all documents here and click back on all documents this is this is the this is the button where you can adjust your view so you can always click on all documents or you can move to a different a different view from here so that's that's all how you can create a new column and then there are different types of columns but yeah um, feel free to send your questions or any new requests for videos but yeah and we'll see you on the next video thank you